Hi everyone, you're watching Shape Up with Sue Daly. Today we're going to be working with curved edges. So English paper piecing with curved edges. Things like Dresden plates, pie shapes and all those things that have one or more curved edges on them. Some people are a little bit daunted by the curved edges but you, you don't need to worry about it. It's very simple and with using the glue pen method it makes life very easy because you can get your curved edges really smooth without any points and bumps on them. So first of all we're going to take a template. I'm going to work with our chubby Dresden today, our small one. So we have a template here, it has a curved edge and then three straight edges here. So as before we're going to just pop it onto our fabric and with our rotary cutter and our rotating mat we're going to cut around the outside edge. Just take it easy, a little bit easy going around the curve and then finish it by going all the way around the edge. Sometimes you get a little nick in there, particularly if you've got a dead spot on your cutter. Okay, so here we have some little chubby Dresden shapes. You're going to take one of your papers from the packet and pop it on top of your fabric on the wrong side. And with your glue pen we're going to work around the outside edge. Now remember this is like a Dresden plate so we don't need to fold the bottom edge over. We're just going to work around these three edges, the side, the top and the side. So again start on one side and with your glue pen glue up the side, keep the glue away from the edge of the paper, press it up and when we come around the top edge glue around the edge, keep it away from the very edge of the paper and you're going to start from one side and we're going to work around to the other. Don't start in the middle. Start from one side and work around to the other side and you're going to be quite assertive with it and you're going to drag the fabric in over the top of the curved edge. Okay, And then down the other side, pull it in nice and tight. So when you look at that you don't have any points and bumps, it's nice and smooth. Okay, We're not gluing the bottom edge because they will all go into the middle and we're going to sew a circle on the top of those to cover the raw edges. So we're going to make up eight of those. So here I have eight sewn together. So what you would do is you get two and you're going to sew from the curved edge, so line your paper, your, um, paper shapes up. You're going to sew from this top curved edge down to the bottom, okay, on all eight sides. Now remember way back in one of my earlier videos where we were doing a six-pointed star and we sewed half and then half. We don't have to do that with these because it already has a hole in the center. We can sew these around in one ring. So you can do one side, then the other, then the other. So you have a ring like that. So when, when you've completed that, you're going to press it well and then I always press it on both sides and you're going to remove the papers from the ring. And then you'll find your background fabric, whatever it is you're using, and in this case I'm using a piece of wool today because I'm going to make a mug rug. Um, and if, for those of you who don't know what a mug rug is, it is a coaster that you put your coffee mug on. I'm going to remove my papers from the back and then I'm going to put my glue on my seam allowances, my applique glue just using a really small amount and I'm going to iron that on until it adheres to, my, to the wall and then I'm going to applique around the outside edge. So with this one 
I've sewn that on around all around the outside edge and we have a circle sewn in the middle okay so we have prepared a circle or I have prepared a circle and I'm going to show you how to glue that as well because sometimes um, people have a little bit of trouble doing these and we don't want any points around that curved edge either so I'll take my paper and my fabric that I have prepared for that and instead of gluing all the way around in one go I just do about half of it and then half of it because by the time I get around to the other side sometimes the glue is dry particularly if you live in a warm climate like I do so I'm going to run my glue pen around the outside there remember keep it in from the edge a little bit and be assertive and you're going to drag the fabric over with your finger and pull it in really tight then you're going to come and glue the rest of it and drag it over really really tight so that all of your little pleats are low around the raw edge of your shape okay so if you can see that there's all these little pleats around that raw edge and they're nice and low away from your nice smooth curved edge if you find that you have a little point there there's a tiny little point on that part there I just pull my fabric back a little and I re-glue it and I pull it nice and tight in over so I don't have those then I take that to the ironing board and I press it on both sides so press it on the right side press it on the wrong side and then I can remove my paper from behind the um, fabric and then I end up with my little shape which is already pressed it has our little fold line all the way around and then I can after this is applique around the outside edge I can lay that on the top I can pop a little bit of applique glue in behind there pop it on the top and then I can use an applique stitch to sew around the outside edge. So remember when you're appliqueing, it's right to left across the top of your work if you're right handed. If you're left handed, you will go from left to right across the top of your work. And that way, you'll have a nice little mug rug or a little coaster or even a little candle mat to pop a nice candle on the top to put down and it's quite cute. Okay, here's another one made in a different color. Now some of the other curved shapes that we have are things like pies and a lot of you would be familiar with the pie and tart quilt and that was a lot of pie segments that sewed around into a circle and I did those in the same way I made up my pie sections um, because that has points on it I made two halves so sewed, sewed them together and then I pressed them and removed the paper and applied them to the background squares um, another shape that we can use is a half circle shape so in this particular piece I've used four squares that I've sewn together here. They're one and a quarter inch squares. And I've coupled them with um, two and a half inch half circles. So this is a circle cut in half. So the diameter of that is two and a half inches. So it works perfectly with these, this two and a half inch square that I've created with the, the four one and a quarter inch um, squares. And you just sew those onto the top and it makes a nice heart shape. And you can have a look at the quilt behind me and you can see that the borders are made with this particular shape. Um, it was just using a, a um, with one inch squares and half two inch circles. So you can use these little hearts to create lots of different things in a quilt. Many of the other designs that we have with curved shapes, also in the quilt behind me, we've got thimble shapes, um, curved thimble shapes, and we have pointed thimble shapes. But those thimble shapes, um, when sewn together and put together with squares will create a double wedding ring effect and uh, so that that's a little bit different to a normal double wedding ring um, some of the other things that we have are two inch Dresdens with a curved edge four inch Dresdens with a curved edge um, small and large chubby Dresdens there's quite a variety of things that we have with curved shapes but don't ever be afraid to work with them they're great for applying onto backgrounds and adding borders to your quilts so I hope today that, that you've learned that curved uh, English paper piecing isn't difficult um, and that maybe you'll go and try it in the near future. So remember you're watching Sue Daly, Shape Up with Sue Daly, um, every Tuesday here in my studio and next week I'm going to bring to you the clamshell. It's uh, a video that you need to see because clamshells um, are 
are really daunting for people. They look at them and, and they feel that they can't achieve a result that's uh, suitable to them. But if you watch my easy method, um, I'm sure that you'll all be doing clamshells. I just love them. They're one of my most favorite shapes. So thanks, so thanks for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you next week. just glue a little bit on my seam allowance to start with on each seam and then I'll pop a little tiny bit up near 